Uh, now at this point I'm going to switch. And these are some uh, Thompson antelopes <laughs> taking a big jump. And so I will take now a jump and go from medical aspect to historic aspect. Uh, and uh, involving Dr. Luca, I'll just speak. Next slide. Uh, it appears that after <laughs> World War I, we said, never again. We learned something, we don't want any wars anymore. Well, uh, we practically never had a year without a war since that time. This is a list of wars in which more than one million people die. Uh, it doesn't include a large number of other wars because in those less than one million people died. The Gulf War, uh, the uh, uh, Armenian uh, genocide uh, in Turkey after World War, uh, the Spanish Civil War, uh, Israeli wars are all <coughs> not listed because they uh, resulted in less than one million uh, deaths. But there was practically not a single year since World War I that some war was not going on somewhere and some people weren't killed in these wars. Next slide. Uh, one of the major uh, murders occurred in Cambodia by Pol Pot, who killed two million people, which doesn't sound like a very big number, but it was 30% of the population. He killed 30% of his own uh, uh, population. Uh, Hitler killed about 10 million civilians. Uh, Stalin killed about 20 million of his own citizens, mostly before uh, World War II. And Mao in China has holds a record because he killed about 40 million. Next one. Actually, uh, if you compare the number of civilians uh, killed, uh, the number of people who died in the war, in Hitler's uh, uh, Nazi <coughs> outfit, maybe about 10 million people died in the war, 10 million civilians were killed. Stalin <coughs> killed about 20 in the war in Russia killed another 20. And again, Mao holds a record with 40 million civilians, but only 10 million in the war. Next slide. Uh, we have seen that already. Next slide. Now, uh, if we see the number of deaths during World War II, uh, particularly as far as a percentage of the population, we find that the Soviet Union lost about 10% of its population. Now, about 70 million people were people of his own citizens whom Stalin deported into the Gulag because they were unreliable people, including the Kazakhs and a number of others, and a number of those died in the Gulag. In, in Germany and Austria, uh, there are different uh, estimates, anywhere from 5 to 10 million people uh, um, died uh, in the war, but about 10 million people, civilians, were uh, transported into death camps and dead died there. Now, these, of these 10 million, about 6 million were Jews, but there were uh, a large number of other groups, which include, included mentally impaired people, they got out of hospitals and killed, homosexuals, gypsies, certain church leaders, many Catholic uh, priests uh, who protested against Nazi atrocities, wound up in these camps and were killed. Uh, Hitler killed a number of one of his own groups, the SA group, because they sort of competed with it. Uh, as far as other countries are concerned, the largest number of deaths uh, compared
compared to the population occurred in Poland, where 19% of the population died in the war, in Hungary, 8% died. And by contrast, in Japan, uh, only about 3% of the population died. In the United Kingdom, about 0.7%. And in the United States, 0.2%. Well, we are a very large country, we have a very large population, and a relatively small number of these population actually fought on, on the front, and we certainly had no problems at all at all. But this is sort of the picture of what happened during World War II. Next slide. Now, what have we learned during these wars? Uh, I can best illustrate uh, it what happened in Hungary and in some of the surrounding Central uh, European countries because I'm most familiar with them. In the Middle Ages, Hungary was one of the largest countries in Europe. It went all the way from the Adriatic Sea through Poland, which become, became part of uh, Hungarian kings, became part of the Polish king, to the Baltic Sea, and it was a very large country is a very large population. Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, now, after World War I, the victorious powers took about two-thirds of the country and gave it to surrounding countries or newly uh, established new countries like the Czech Republic, uh, uh, Slovakia, which all consisted of many different parts. So Hungary became just one third of its original size, and about three million Hungarians found themselves in s surrounding countries uh, outside of their original country. Now, in addition to uh, uh, these, uh, all the losing powers in World War I we were given a tremendous reparation bill. They had to pay huge amount of money every year uh, to the victorious powers. And all of that resulted in a tremendous degree of uh, unemployment. In some areas, 30% of the population was unemployed. A tremendous degree of depression. And people were desperate and desperate people looked for desperate measures, and that resulted in Germany to the right, rise of Hitler and the Nazis, in Italy to rise of Mussolini, in Russia to rise of Stalin and the communists. And indeed, these very severe measures which the victorious powers uh, uh, posed on the defeated powers were the nucleus of the Second World War, which then was a major uh, catastrophe for all of humanity. Now, we have learned something from these problems. And after World War II, instead of coming around with these very severe measures, we came along with a Marshall Plan. We have the uh, German and Italian uh, uh, groups which were defeated to s come back and stand on their own feet. And we avoided the kind of problems which occurred after World War I. 